The French Revolution was one of the bloodiest events in modern history. Between 1789 and 1799, French men and women experienced dramatic changes in their social and political systems. They overthrew a monarchical system built on aristocratic and ecclesiastical privileges and tried to replace it with a more democratic vision of society. But hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children in France paid for these political and social transformations with their lives. Although most associate French revolutionary violence with the guillotine, bloodshed happened throughout the revolution in many ways. People attacked each other in the streets, in prisons, and even in churches. Men and women from the royal family, the aristocracy, and the church were killed for being associated with the old order. Those who were luckier lost only their heads. As the revolution progressed, various factions came into conflict. There was no single vision of what the post-revolutionary world would be. But was the entire French Revolution a bloody mess? No. The French Revolution achieved important political and social changes that are still relevant today. The horrific tales of the French Revolution can still shock and disturb those who read them centuries later. These moments are on par with the brutal rebellions of the 21st century, with the horrible things done by the Catholic Church and gruesome torture methods. The moments in history when the bleak side of human nature was exposed before everyone. The revolution was not only about freedom, equality, and fraternity. It also featured some brutality. Most historians mark the storming of the Bastille as the beginning of the French Revolution. That is why the French celebrate Bastille Day as the national holiday on July the 14th. Bastille Saint-Antoine was a Parisian fortress administered by the state. It contained weapons, gunpowder, and several prisoners. On July the 14th, 1789, there were only seven. The fortress commander, 47-year-old Bernard René de Launay, was born in the Bastille in 1740, when his father was the one in charge. In a tragic twist of fate, de Launay's life ended in the Bastille. On that fateful day, a crowd of French commoners approached the fortress to demand gunpowder and weapons. Although de Launay was initially cordial to the crowd, things quickly got out of hand. The mob attacked the fortress and stormed it, capturing de Launay, promising to escort him safely outside. However, the crowd quickly turned violent and began beating and stabbing de Launay. After a brutal fight, he died. The crowd sawed off his head, stuck it on a spear, and paraded through the streets of Paris. It was the bloody beginning of the revolution. Revolutionaries dug up the rotting bodies of French royalty and destroyed the remains. After King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette felt the embrace of Madame Guillotine, the revolutionaries stuffed their bodies into coffins, shoved them into an anonymous grave, and covered them with virgin lime in the Madeleine Cemetery, Paris, along with the remains of thousands of other guillotine victims. Although Louis and Marie Antoinette were the fortunate ones, whose remains were eventually recovered and buried in the Basilica of Saint Denis in 1817, other members of royalty were not so fortunate. As part of the anti-monarchical fervor of the French Revolution, royalty, all members, even those long dead, were considered the enemy of the revolution, and its memory had to be destroyed. All symbols of the monarchy were attacked, and this meant exhuming the decomposing bodies of kings, queens, and consorts. In July 1793, the desecration and destruction of royal tombs became official business. Revolutionaries dug up bodies in the Basilica of Saint Denis, where most of the French royalty had been buried for centuries. They then placed the remains in a mass grave, threw virgin lime over the bodies, and then destroyed them. All over France, royal bodies were dug up and buried this way, including Henry IV and Catherine de' Medici. The bodies of English kings, such as Henry II, his wife Eleanor of Aquitaine, and son Richard the Lionheart, all buried in Fontevard Abbey, were also removed and scattered during the revolution. The revolutionaries did not target royalty alone. Even people associated with the aristocratic circle, such as Diane de Poutier, King Henry IV's favorite mistress, met the same fate. The Princess of Lamballe was attacked in the streets of Paris. The French revolutionaries attacked all remnants of the old order, especially the aristocrats, who were strongly associated with the royal family. Princess de Lamballe, 
a close friend of Queen Marie Antoinette, was one of the victims of the revolution's anti-monarchical wrath. Marie-Louise de Savoy was born in Turin on September the 8th, 1749. In 1766, she was 17. She married a member of the royal French family. After her husband's death, she was granted considerable wealth and entered the highest circles of French society. She quickly became friends with the future queen Marie Antoinette. Still a newcomer to Versailles, Marie Antoinette was an outsider at her own court and was always together with her few friends. The Princess of Lamballe was among the select handful who spent substantial time with the Queen. Critics of the monarchy used the friendship between the two women as a weapon. They claimed that such a bond was illicit and proof of the Queen's depravity. When the revolution broke out in 1789, the Princess of Lamballe openly supported the Queen. She welcomed members of the National Convention into her salon. In 1791, she went to Britain to ask powerful friends to help the royal family flee France. But in the summer of 1792, Princess de Lamballe was arrested. She was tried by the Revolutionary Court on September the 3rd, 1792. When pressed to take an oath of allegiance to the revolution, she flatly refused. The assembly decided to throw her into the street, where a crowd had gathered. There were many accounts of the princess's death. Historians cannot agree on a single version, but her end was violent and her body was desecrated. Frantic revolutionaries stuck her head on a spear and went to the queen's cell, where they tried to force the monarch to kiss the severed head of her dear friend. French troops killed thousands of peasants in the Vendée. Not everyone accepted the revolution's growing radicalism in the early 1790s. There was one region in northwestern France that rejected the revolution's ideals and new policies of dechristianization, mass conscription, and the collapse of the social order. This region, the Vendée, faced serious reprisals. Populated mainly by poor and religious peasants, the Vendée was the main site of a massive uprising against the revolution. The civilians created their own army and clashed with the revolutionary forces. There were several bloody battles in 1793. By the end of that year, the fighting had virtually stopped, but the vendetta against Vendée was just beginning. In early 1794, the government began a brutal policy to punish the region. General Louis-Marie Thoreau told his troops to march into the Vendée and massacre all monarchist men, women, and children along the way. They also burned villages and land. In total, about 170,000 people in the Vendée were killed. Although the details of the war in the Vendée and its consequences are still hotly debated, the truth is that the revolution did not just represent the people, it also turned against them when there was resistance. Robespierre led the Reign of Terror, which killed 27,000 people. When people think of the French Revolution, a period of about 10 years, they often remember the period of the Terror, a stage of the revolution that lasted less than a year, between 1793 and 1794. But that moment killed 27,000 people. About 17,000 were executed, and 10,000 died in prison. Although the violence in the revolution did not begin or end in the terror, the period was an exceptionally frightening time during the revolution. One of those responsible was Robespierre. Maximilien Robespierre was a Jacobin and fully believed in the terror. Although the guillotine was adopted by moderate revolutionary reformers and enlightenment men who looked to this weapon as a quick and gentle end for the convicted criminals, Robespierre and the Jacobins used it with excitement. The public loved it, and guillotining the revolution's enemies became a public spectacle. The Reign of Terror claimed tens of thousands of victims, among them the feminist revolutionary Olympe de Gauche, King Louis XVI, Queen Marie Antoinette, who by all accounts faced her fate with dignity, and finally Robespierre himself in 1794.